Okay, coaches, the featured speaker this morning. We're excited to have her on the call. Um, she has been with Beachbody since December of 2008, just a little over four years. Uh, she's from Asheville, North Carolina. She was a 2012 elite coach, 22 months in success club. She is currently number 15 on the 2013 elite uh, leaderboard. Uh, she is a seven-star diamond coach with 13 lifetime diamonds. She has a, now, I think these are interesting numbers, 142 personally sponsored coaches. If you take that over the four years, what that means is every month over those four years, she has averaged about three coach sponsors each month. That doesn't include the customers, but three coach sponsors. So um, it's consistency in the business. We're absolutely thrilled this morning to have from Asheville, North Carolina, seven-star diamond coach, Michelle Myers. Michelle, welcome. Oh, thank you so much, Jeff. That was a very, very sweet introduction. Well, everyone, just so you know this, we were talking before the call. Michelle is uh, is expecting in December, and uh, we were talking about not as you know. We hope that she delivers her message today, but we hope that she doesn't deliver um, a baby today. So anyway, we're going to keep it kind of low key, not too not too excitable. Uh, we were also talking about names, and I was a little disappointed, though, to know that Jeff didn't even make it, like, to the top 20 names. So um, <laughs> there was a little bit of a letdown there, but, but I think Cole is an amazing name for a boy. So anyway, congratulations. Thank you so much. We're excited, but he's going to cooperate today and stay in there. Uh all right, he could be a Christmas baby, it sounds like. So, That's right. Anyway, well, listen, Michelle, um, you've got a great story with Beachbody. You've been with us for a while. You've consistently built your business. You've had great uh, uh, financial success. You've created a great team. But just why don't you just jump in by telling your story of how you got involved with Beachbody way back when? Well, as, as far as discovering Beachbody, I did learn about Beachbody in October of 2008 and immediately wanted to be a coach and came home to my husband, which we were both working on our master's degree at the time and both working full time. So when I said that I wanted to have another job, he thought I was crazy. Um, so I was quiet about it and didn't mention it again until he asked me what I wanted for Christmas. And so I actually became a Beach Buddy coach for Christmas as my Christmas present in December of 2008. Um, I really wanted to do P90X. I was excited about the business, but I didn't really understand the opportunity that is in front of me. So my sign-up date was in December of 2008, but I didn't really start working my business until January of 2010 when I realized the opportunity in front of me and recognized instead of reactively working my business what was possible when I started proactively working my business, getting on calls, participating in the game plan, the three vital behaviors. It was very simple to see a business really start to boom and really start to grow when I started doing the basics. So it is quite funny to find out that a business that I started um, as a Christmas gift because we were you know, financially struggling in school um, has now turned into a six-figure income working from home where I'm able to give my kids my top priority. And so it has been a huge blessing um, on a physical side of it. I don't have a great weight loss story with Beachbody. I actually have a great weight gain story with Beachbody. I suffered from an eating disorder for four years, and Beachbody really helped me to develop a mindset of being healthy, not skinny. And I am healthier than I've ever been. In fact, I was once so unhealthy that I was told by doctors that I would never be able to have children. And because I really took priority with my health and started being active with Shakeology and my workouts, not killing my body, but actually fueling my body to do the workouts and using our fantastic programs like P90X and Turbo Fire and Insanity was able to get in the best shape of my life and I have one beautiful boy already who's two and a half and another boy on the way next month so I could not be more grateful for Team Beachbody for what it's done for me personally and what it's done for my family well that's that's an, an awesome story and like you say it, it's kind of the reverse story of many people who are trying to lose weight trying to get healthy where um, you saw the nutrition, saw the fitness opportunities to, to, to the beach body offered on the other side and, and, and leveraged those. The, the other thing, I think it was a little conniving of you to you know, kind of spring the Christmas thing on your husband to get your wishes. I mean, you, 
just kind of conniving, I think, Michelle. It was so manipulation it like at its best, but it worked, and he is the biggest fan of Team Beachbody now, so he is okay with that kind of manipulation if it I, ever happens I again. Bet, I bet that he is. I mean, he, he'll never regret that gift, that Christmas gift. That's right. You know, we, you know, in some of the notes that we that we took, you shared a, a turning point in your Beachbody in your Beachbody career. Um, it, it's kind of what kind of opened your eyes. Why don't you share just a little bit about that? I think my big turning point happened when I had the opportunity to go to Hawaii as the guest of my upline coach, Jackie Bull, uh, the first, very first perk trip that Beachbody ever offered. And it was so eye-opening to me to be able to see the life that was possible for me to be able to give my family. I grew up, I have a wonderful childhood, so a no-sob story here, but my parents were not financially well off. And so when we did get to go on vacation, it was just very conservative. You know, we got there, we stayed at the place that was the cheapest. We cooked in our hotel room and we went and we laid on the beach and we had a great time. But when I went to Hawaii and I saw, you know, that, hey, you can go horseback riding on the beach. You can go zip lining over inactive volcanoes. You can. And I really saw that I wanted my kids to be able to not just Live, exist. I wanted them to be able to really live. And so that was a major turning point for me and just realizing like this is possible with this business. It's possible for me to do better and to give more to my family and that's what I want to do. That's great. Well, you know, one of the words that you you touched upon as you introduced yourself was uh you realized that by focusing on some of the basics that mm-hmm. that has been really key to your business. And of course, one of the basics is is sharing. We talk about sharing. We talk about selling, and uh, and you've been able to really finesse that, if you will, to find that right balance where it feels good, and 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 yet you've created great results and created kind of this noble aspect to this to the sharing. And so, take a few minutes and share what your insights have been, what you've gleaned, and what you've mastered over these last few years, or working on mastering. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think the most important factor is our mindset. You know, yes, we are a selling based business, but if we think of our job as sales, if that's how we approach it, we're always going to come across as icky. You know, people don't usually wor- use the word noble and sales in the same sentence. Um, but I'm actually reading a fantastic book right now in my personal development that's called Selling with Noble Purpose how to drive revenue and do work that makes you proud and that is by Lisa McLeod her last name is M C capital L E O D and i highly recommend it it's going to go right along with what i'm going to be sharing today and it's perfect for our business because we offer our customers a lot more than just a product we can offer them a new lifestyle and so instead of thinking of our jobs in terms of i sell shakeology or i sell T25 we really need to define what we do by our purpose And so, for example, just with success stories that I've gotten from my customers and my coaches in the last few weeks, when I think about my purpose behind my job, I can say I help people get off medications they've taken for years. I help moms be able to stay home and raise their kids. I helped an exhausted and overweight mom become a healthy, energized mom. And so when I sit down to work or when I get into a conversation with a prospective customer, I always try to remember how I can make a difference in their life and what I love about my job on my best day. And so I'd like to give a couple of tips to where coaches can know if we are sharing or if we're selling because there is a difference. And if you sell, you might not always sell, but if you share, you stand a much greater chance of selling. And so, again, this is so basic. It's in the three vital behaviors. It's just being proof the products work, but it still can get tricky. And so let's get into our tips. So tip number one for you is you're sharing if you think customer first, product second. You're sharing if you think customer first, product second. So when we begin a conversation with someone that means that our goal is not to first sell them a challenge pack or to get them on Shakeology HD. Our goal is to find out if we can help them in an area where they're struggling. So hear me, especially if you're a new coach, because I know I made this mistake so many times in the beginning. I don't think if you're guilty of seeing potential customers as walking challenge packs that you don't care. I don't, I don't think that's possible. I think your heart is probably in the right place. But you're probably just afraid that if you put your personal agenda aside, that it's going to get lost. But it won't, I promise. If we put our customers first, our goals will be met too. But when we put our goals ahead of theirs, 
we aren't meeting them where they are. When we're talking about challenge packs and all of these things because they've said one thing about maybe being interested in what we do, they may not even know what a challenge pack is. So, for example, a, a question that I like to ask a potential customer is simply, what are some of the biggest challenges that you're currently facing in your health and fitness? Because chances are they may not even realize their struggles until they're forced to vocalize them. And so they aren't ready to hear our solutions until they realize that they have a problem. So we can't offer solutions too soon because it might not be the right one. So when they're talking and when they're sharing their story and sharing their struggles, then the right products can start to come to your mind. For example, if they say, I don't have time, maybe T25 would be a great option, or P90X3 when it comes out next month, or I eat fast food out of convenience. They need a quick option. That's a perfect person for Shakeology. Or if they just say, I just can't be consistent, I never stick with it. Then you can talk about the accountability aspect that comes along from participating in one of your challenge groups. And so after they've shared with us, then we can offer the best solutions based on our experience and our knowledge instead of just jumping immediately to product instead of knowing them first. So tip number one, you're sharing if you think customer first and product second. So tip number two, you're sharing if you show you're a coach more than you say that you're a coach. I jokingly say that I used to be willing to sign up anyone who had thirty nine ninety five in a pulse, and I would be guilty of big selling no-nos, like posting meaningless Facebook statuses with nothing more than my website and a, hey, if you need a new fitness program or some supplements, buy it from this link so I get credit for your order. And I thought that these were things that were showing other people that I was a coach when I was really just saying I was a coach. I wasn't showing anybody anything. And from all of the mass invites that I tried, I really never got anybody intrigued by just posting a link. But, for example, because I've started sharing more, this morning I had a picture of my son and my husband, and I wasn't even talking about the Shakeology, but, of course, it was in the morning, so they were both drinking Shakeology. I didn't even mention it, and somebody posted on there, and they were like, oh, I see Noah's drinking his yake, which is what my two-and-a-half-year-old calls his Shakeology. And that, to me, I was like, that's a sign that I'm sharing to where they see a cup and they know that it has something chocolate in it and they know that Noah drinks Shakeology in the morning and they were aware of that of what it was and even what he called it. Um, so some examples of how we can show that we're coaches is posting things that we're learning from personal development reading and our audio. This shows that we have a job that work helps us to work to become better because I was thinking about this this morning. There are so few jobs that are out there that help you to become better, but that is something that we have that's different and, and unique. You can share health and fitness tips. This brands you as an expert, even if you're not, even if it's just something that you've learned. If you share that with other people, then automatically they think, if I have a health and fitness question, I need to go to you. I need to come to you. Um, brag on your customers and your coaches publicly. People love recognition, and people love encouraging. People love positivity, and so brag on them. Take photos when you're at events, doing a getting started right interview, or just hanging out with a coach or a customer. This just shows that our job is real and that it's not something that we just make up. This is something that is a real tangible part of what we do on a daily basis. Uh, share results of your current challenge group participants to help recruit your next group. Uh, for example, I actually filled a T25 group with 12 customers a couple of months back because I did one post where I talked about parents. There's a husband and a wife that were both in my challenge group, and they slept in that morning but got their T25 workout done on a Saturday because they sent their kids to clean their room, and they were able to send their kids to get their room clean while they did their workout, and she posted that in our challenge group. And so I was like, dude, that is a fitness and parenting win all at the same time. Your kids have clean rooms, and you got your workout done. And just from sharing that with my following, I was able to fill my very next group. And so what you want to do when you're sharing this is you want people to see your job and think, wow, I'd, I'd really love to do that for a living, or, man, I really need to be in one of her groups. So let me just pause for a second and say that this doesn't mean that we don't still have to reach out to others and that they're always going to come to us simply because we're sharing. We still have to invite. That's still very, very important. But when we're showing that we're a coach on a regular basis, people who know us or follow us already have an idea of what we do and might have even considered it for themselves before we approach them. 
So think about how you're effectively showing that you're a coach. Just go back, look at your interactions that you've had on social media. Think about your conversations that you've had with prospective customers and coaches. From the way that you talk, do they know that you're a coach? Can they see that in your actions? So tip number two, you're sharing if you show you're a coach more than you say you're a coach. So tip number three, you're sharing if the close is shorter than the conversation. And I know closing is a very sales term. So when I'm talking about closing, this is when you're asking the person to take an action step. And at this point, it may be for them to try Shakeology or to join one of your challenge groups. And so if you have talked to them about their current struggles, you've offered them the solution, you've gone through their objections, and now you're down to the action step, that's the close. If you've done your job in the conversation, the close won't take very long. It shouldn't drag on for days and days. They should know pretty much right away, yes, that's absolutely what I need to do, or you know, um, they, maybe it's not the right time for them right now. But if you're finding that you jump to a challenge group or you jump to Shakeology really, really, really fast and you have this conversation that drags on in your Facebook inbox for like a week and a half afterwards, you may not be spending enough time on the conversation in the beginning. So think of it this way. If you rush the close, if you rush the action step, it's probably going to delay the purchase. And so don't ignore questions that you feel derail you from getting to the next step. I love the five step challenge pack, but if you can't, you can't think that it's always going to be done in five steps. Sometimes step two may take five steps alone. And so learn as much as you can about them instead of just trying to get to that action step because the more you know about them, the more compelling of a close you can create because of course you know our product, but then you're going to know the customer, you're going to know them and their story and what's going to work best for them as well. So tip number three, you're sharing if your close is shorter than the conversation. And so I know that we say share, don't sell a lot in our business, but this is what it really breaks down to is in our interactions with our coaches and our customers of making sure that we are really putting them first that we're showing that we're a coach, and that by the time we get to that question of asking them to take an action step, in fact, most of the time you'll find that they initiate the close because they say, okay, this is exactly what I need. You're exactly right. Tell me what I need to do. Tell me where to order. Tell me what to happen. And so that's going to make the sales icky part really go away because they realize that they need it for themselves. And so – I want us to realize that when we're doing this, when we're going about these practices, that we can remember that the importance of our job as coaches, that we're working together to end the trend of obesity and improve the quality of life of those around us. We're not just selling something. We're sharing something that can change the lives of the people that we're talking to. And it's not just that it changes theirs. It can change ours, too. Jeff and I hit on this a little bit in the beginning, but just to really kind of reiterate to where you understand what's possible for you in this business. When this was my Christmas present in December of 2008, I would have laughed in your face if you had told me that it would have become what it has become today. But when I think about where I am because of what I've been able to accomplish with this business, doing something that I love, I love my children, I love being able to be with them and to spend time with them and to keep them first, but I also look forward to when I get to work my business because I love my job. And very few people get to have that opportunity. And very few people get to do something that they love and to be compensated well for it. And so a business that we got started as a Christmas gift because we were too broke to afford it any other way has turned in to where I have the financial freedom to be home with my kids and to provide the kind of life for them to where when we're thinking about my son's third birthday and the fact that he loves Disney World, we're like, Dude, let's just take him to Disneyland. And that would have never, ever been possible. And so by just sharing with other people how this business and these products have blessed me, I in turn get blessed back. And my customer stories and the stories of my coaches that I helped start this business, they only fuel my fire and make my why even bigger. 
And so maybe you're on this call and you haven't quite gotten it yet. You haven't quite grasped. Maybe you're like me and you'd signed up but you hadn't started. If you will start and you will be consistent, you will be in a completely different place. But I can tell you that if you quit, if you quit this business, then it's probably going to be not because you couldn't do it, not because the business was too hard or the products were too expensive to sell. It's probably going to be because you never really started. And so give sharing a try, and I promise that you will sell. Wow, Michelle, some some awesome some awesome pointers on this. Yeah, you know, there were just there were a couple. There was a bunch of things that jumped that jumped out to me, but. Um, you know, just the, the, the customer first, product second. It's this concept. You, know, you have to be interested before you know being interesting. Getting, letting them know you're genuinely interested. And I love this concept of, and I think this is a filter for every single coach on this call that's listening. It's a, it's a gut check to go back and say, um, am I just saying I'm a coach, or how am I really showing that I'm a coach that, that gener- generates you know genuine you know genuine interest in this. And then as you talk about the, the, the close, I, I smiled because I thought, you know, so often the reason people don't like the word close is because it feels like this, like you say, an icky tactic. But most people, most people know that you're moving towards a decision. And the only time it's uncomfortable is when they're not prepared to make a decision and you haven't done your work and you've done that really well. So the, 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 just the last piece I would throw out here is coaches, this is a subtle piece that Michelle threw out. <clears throat> right now, she is reading a book on how to get better. She is engaging in her personal development of how to hone her skill sets of sharing in a more noble way, in, in a better way. And this is a you know young woman, young mom who's busy, school, two children, expecting um, all of those kinds of things. It goes in hand with Eric Ward, this book that's out there now called GoPro. Very simple book. You ought to read it. But but one of the pieces he talks about is making the decision to learn the skill sets necessary to be successful. Mm-hmm. You have to make the decision, and then you have to take the time to learn those skill sets. And and I, I, I'm impressed, Michelle, you're still reading. You're still learning. to, to How do I get better and better at doing this? So. Anyway, some great information, coaches. You need to listen to this call again. I think there's some, like I say, some filters, some reflection time to go back and say, how am I doing in these areas so that I can up my game? So, Michelle, thank you so much for being on the call today. You were outstanding. Um, And good luck with baby Jet Cole. (laughs) <laughs> well, thanks for having me. And, you know, now that the call is over, Sandy can say Cole can come at any time, but we're going to pray that he decides to stay in till till full term. So Exactly. Well, it, for, for everybody knows, we, we had a call with Mindy Wender at one time, and she was right in the middle, and we had to move the call because she was, like, at that point. So uh, we were laughing and saying, let's not have that happen again. So, Michelle, congratulations on your success. Congratulations on uh, what you've been able to accomplish, the lives that you're touching, and and for sharing uh, some some great insights this morning. Well, thank you for having me again, Jeff. I appreciate it. You, our our pleasure. Well, coaches, some great information. Look, this is a business about making decisions. If you want to change your life, uh, if you want something different in your life, you have to do something different with your life. And uh, Michelle gave some great pointers to you this morning of of how you can refine your game. For some of us, you know, we think I've got to make the leap you know, from here to there in one giant leap. You don't need to do that. What you need to do is you need to baby step this by some of the great tips that you get every morning on the, every Monday morning on the National Wake Up Call. Michelle gave some great pointers of some things that you can engage in, you can do today to refine your game, to up your game, and that will create greater results that then moves you closer to what your dreams are, to what your goals are. So my challenge is make today work. Make some decisions today. But more importantly, don't think that you have to be ready to go. Jump. Get out there and do something. Stop waiting. Stop getting ready. Move today. Give yourself permission to go out and make some mistakes today. Uh, Create your goals and go after them, coaches. Um, and, and, and realize what a Michelle Myers has realized in her life. I, I, I smiled as she was talking about her. Her life has changed because uh, she didn't share this, but 
out of debt, paid off all their student loans, has has um, uh, put away college fund for their for their little boy already through discipline, but through creating results. And again, that's where peace comes from. That's where security comes from. And my guess is that's what most of you want in this life, and that's the opportunity that lies in front of you if you'll seize it, if you'll take it, if you'll run with it, if you'll develop the skill sets. Coaches, um, let's make this, as Darren said, a fantastic week, but you have to make it that way.